All right, just a little bit of introductory music to bring us all into the space. I'd really like to thank last week's uh, guest discussant, um, Dr. Wahidullah Sahar, for sharing with us this beautiful song by Ustad Musa Qasimi. Um, in Rag Chandra Khan's. Um, as many of you who are familiar with Hindustani music or South Asian music generally, especially in the Raga format, might recognize this does sound a lot like Hindustani classical music. And I think is generally a good note to begin um, or rather continue our discussion of the linkages between Afghan music and uh, Raga based music as we know it. Um, predominantly from the Indian perspective. For those of you who don't know me, by means of introduction, my name is Amita Vempati. I am uh, the program lead for the social justice series at Brooklyn Raga Massive. And you are joining us for our series, um, The Law of Music, Raga's Rhythms and Imaginations from Afghanistan. I'm so excited to, as always, bring you um, more uh, wonderful programming, really doing a deep dive into our shared connections. And as many of you might know, normally I decide to have a grounding moment to begin our presentation. But um, at this time, I felt it imperative to actually begin on a note that is a call to action for all of you who are watching this video. Um, which um, I would like to just share um, on behalf of our partners um, at Afghans for a Better Tomorrow, um, who are helping us um, through this series, but are also just an incredible advocacy group based in Los Angeles. Um, for those of you who are might not be familiar, um, earlier this week or late last week, rather, um, President Biden made a not very good decision um, to um, split $7 billion in frozen Afghan funds that the United States was previously holding. Um, these were Afghan assets and Afghan money. Um, and uh, President Biden is now using it to both fund humanitarian relief to Afghanistan, um, but also give some to the victims of the September 11th attacks. Um, while these uh, while these intentions are, um, are good on face, um, they do ignore a fundamental reality that these $7 billion did belong to the people of Afghanistan 
and should have been released back to the people of Afghanistan, particularly as their economy continues to suffer due to sanctions under the new Taliban regime. Um, so we find this use, uh, we find this decision by President Biden to be extremely irresponsible. Um, and we would encourage all of you um, sort of in the spirit of solidarity with our friends in Afghanistan, as well as Afghan Americans and the Afghan diaspora worldwide to, um, to really take some action if you can. Um, and here I've shared um, a screenshot of the toolkit um, provided by Afghans for a Better Tomorrow, which will give you a means of contacting uh, your local representatives, um, calling their office and demanding that uh, Biden actually give the money back to the people of Afghanistan um, in order to better their condition at the moment. Um, you can find more information about Afghans for a Better Tomorrow at the hyperlink below. Um, at the website www.weareafghans.org. Um, and the link is also in the YouTube chat. Um, so we really encourage you to take this motion if you can. This is something that is uh, frankly going to have devastating effects to an already devastated Afghan economy, to say nothing of the repercussions to the diaspora um, and Afghans worldwide who are suffering um, the traumas uh, inflicted by this administration on Afghanistan. So thank you all for holding space for that. I feel like it is an important thing to mention before we um, undertake a further discussion of the ways that we can prove and further our solidarity with the Afghan people. With that, I feel like now understanding the heaviness of this moment and what we are about to explore together, I would like to invite all of you to take a community breath with me just to release some of the heaviness of what I just said um, and maybe ground ourselves in this moment which is dedicated to exploring the shared beauty between all of us. I will count to three and I will cue the inhale and the exhale if you would like to join me. So one, two, three, Inhale. And exhale. I hope that this brief moment of silence is one that you can feel comfortable returning to throughout this presentation. And I would encourage all of you to do so if you feel like you need it. Um, certainly a lot of the discussions, as I mentioned, um, in this space might evoke a lot of feelings and emotions, um, but truly at the end of the day, this is an endeavor that we undertake to share with each other and hold space for each other in all the ways that we can. Um, and if you ever are feeling a little bit uncomfortable, remember that the one thing that we all share is the grounding breath and return to it once again, whenever you feel like you need to. With that, I would also like to introduce um, the community intentions that we have set for this series. Um, an important part of this is that um, as part of Brooklyn Raga Massive, I feel sort of compelled to honestly state that um, while Brooklyn Raga is a, always strives for inclusivity and has done a lot to improve uh, South Asian music's uh, inclusivity towards other cultures, um, we are an organization that in reality is dominated by voices that are most adjacent to India, sometimes Pakistan. Um, and as a result, um, it really behooves us to look beyond what the scope of Indian and Pakistani so on institutions tell us about what South Asia is. And so we're hoping that this series does a lot to inspire reflection within us, but also encourage, um, as I said, more connections within the Afghan community so we can begin growing uh, our community from the inside out. So the first intention toward that end is to uh, center Afghan art, voices, and experiences. Um, this is something that uh, 
as it turns out, Afghan history and Afghan politics are things that people tend to have a lot of opinions about, but we are committed to making sure that Afghan um, opinions, voices, experiences, and expertise certainly is centered throughout these events. Our second intention is that we will be learning about Afghan musical theory, history, and culture. Obviously, these are all interconnected parts of understanding the music of any given place and point in time. So our discussions will be a little bit ch chunky, but we hope we'll give you a lot to a lot to sink your teeth into and a lot to explore, um, not just sonically, but also um, historically, politically, um, and in discussion with Afghan peoples. The third intention, which I've been alluding to uh, throughout this introduction, is that we seek to build solidarity between all South Asian diasporic groups and inclusivity of Afghan diaspora in South Asian American communities. Once again, coming from a point of honesty, um, my position as an Indian American behooves me to say that I do not feel like my part of the South Asian diaspora community has been present for the Afghan diaspora during this time. And I feel like we can really work on that in terms of exploring our shared cultural, linguistic, historical connections to ensure that we are moving forward together as a more fuller envisioned part of the diaspora um, rather than simply divided along national, ethnic, religious lines, and so on and so forth. The final intention is that we endeavor to support Afghan advocacy needs. Um, I really do want to take a small moment during this intention um, to first of all, hearken back to the toolkit that was provided by Afghans for a Better Tomorrow that I shared uh, two slides ago. Um, that is one way, of course, that we can endeavor to support Afghan advocacy needs. Um, the second one, is um, actually to sort of state that while we are providing a musical um, workshop in this particular event, we will be focusing on rhythms of Afghanistan. Um, I would like to invite that if you choose to continue your study of Afghan rhythms, if you choose to feel inspired in your own music and use your inspirations from Afghan rhythms that you, materially and explicitly acknowledge that those contributions come from the people of Afghanistan um, and that you consider what accountable sharing and accountable fusion looks like um, within your own practice and to inspire more people to study Afghan music as taught by Afghan practitioners. Um, and the final point of advocacy is that throughout the series, um, as with our other social justice series, we have been encouraging people to contribute um, through funding, um, through selected initiatives. And we would really like to um, bring this to um, our other partner um, for the series. Um, in addition to uh, Afghans for a Better Tomorrow, we are also partnered with Sound Central Festival, the organizers of Afghanistan's, um, an alternative music festival in Afghanistan in the early 2010s. Um, they've done incredible work platforming and giving musical education to a number of Afghan youth. And at the moment, they are pivoting to um, assist Afghan Sufis um, and specifically Afghan whirling dervishes. So um, the link to um, those campaigns should be um, in the description for YouTube, but I would like to invite you to watch this video just to understand a little bit more about what, uh, what we're doing with sound with the Afghan Sufis. As we know, all Afghanistan is under the control of Taliban nowadays. So, because of their different ideological beliefs and ideas against the uh, Sufism school, we are all under the threat of Taliban regime. Please save 
against the Beijing team and support us. Thank you all for holding space for that video. And I'm looking forward to um, seeing how we can continue our support um, for all Afghan musicians, including the ones that share our space. Before I uh, introduce our instructor, I would like to um, introduce um, someone who has very kindly agreed to help us um, during this event um, to uh, facilitate uh, some of the, the language um, uh, again, <laughs> to facilitate the cross-lingual discussions that we are going to be having. Um, and if you will allow me to please introduce our translator for the evening, um, Ahmed Bosset Azizi. Um, Bosset is a senior at the University of Kansas. He is pursuing a bachelor's degree in political science, global and international studies, and music. Um, he's very versatile, with minors in intelligence and national security studies and Middle Eastern studies. He is originally from Afghanistan. During his 16 years in Kabul and his music career, he has performed for both President Hamid Karzai and President Ashrafani on multiple occasions. He has performed for ministers, government officials, and diplomats in multiple embassies, such as the embassies of the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, Australia, France, Denmark, and Sweden in Kabul. He received the Musical Ambassador Award from the 10th Mountain Division Band in Kabul, Afghanistan, and the Award for Excellence from the United States Army, Army Band, Pershing's Own, after performing a concert with the Army Band in Washington, DC, and laying a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Arlington National Cemetery. Most recently, he worked as a legislative intern in the United States Congress. His mission is to educate people to accept each other with all of our beautiful differences. What a lovely coincidence. That is also our, our mission, <laughs> Bosset. Um, and I don't believe it is mentioned here, but Bosset is actually a trumpet player. Um, so we are very, very fortunate to have him today. Tasha Kurizio, Bosset John, we are so happy that you have chosen to join us for this event. It's great to be here. Thank you. Chef. Of course. And with that, I would like to introduce um, our instructor for this workshop, um, Hamid Rauf Habib Zada, who I have been very fortunate to have many conversations with over the past couple of weeks. Um, just a little bit about Hamid. Um, he was born in 1997 in Hirat, Afghanistan. He is a professional tabla player and also plays harmonium. He started playing tabla when he was nine years old, learning from his brother, who is a professional classical singer in Hirat. Over the last 10 years, Hamid has played with singers in Hirat at many weddings and private parties. In 2018, he also played two music festivals in Turkmenistan. Hamid has taught for six years in Hirat with his brother, teaching tabla, harmonium, and vocals in an all-inclusive music course. He studied in the Aga Khan Music School in Herat, and then studied at the Afghan National Institute of Music in Kabul. Just like Bosset, we also have a very versatile human being here. In addition to music, Hamid has specialized in computer programming. But tonight, we are very lucky that he is um, the only technology he's dealing with is Zoom um, and his microphone, and we can focus on um, some of your musical expertise, Hamid John. So, Tasha Kurziod, we are very happy that you are here with us today. Thank you, thank you. It's my honor. Of course. So, with that, um, you know, we actually thought that maybe just before this workshop, um, we can um, begin sort of uh, with a conversation with you, Hamid John, just to understand a little bit more about the culture around tabla playing in Afghanistan and what your journey has been as a tabla player. Um, so with that, um, I would like to um, ask, would you be able to share with us a little bit of your journey as a tabla player? 
ایسی که چرا فرام موسیقی رو شروع کردیم تقویر رو شروع کردیم برای ما امر مشاهد بسازیم سلام دارم خدمت تمام بینندگان عزیز و خوشحال هستم از که در بازم شما هستم در جمع شما هستم Hi to everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. I'm, I'm very fortunate to have this opportunity to discuss and talk with you all. من آموختن تبله را از سن 8 سالگی شروع کردم. نظر به این که در یک فامیل موزیکال تولد شده بودم و تقریبا تمام اعضای فامیلیم هنرمند بودن و موسیقی یا موسیقی کار میکردن یا نقاش بودن یا خطاط باز علاقه به تبله بوده که شروع کنم از این I was born into a musical family. All members of my family were artists, either music or some other forms of art. And so for that reason, my interest was to play the tabla. And I've been playing the tabla since I was eight years old. و در اول تبله را پیش برادر خود احمد رو فتی علی خان که خودش شاگرد استاد برای فتی علی خان پاکستانی می باشد شروع کردم. I first began taking lessons with uh, my uh, older brother Ahmad uh, Rauf uh, Fateh Ali, who is uh, a student of uh, Ustad Bari Fateh Ali Khan. And in the last few years, I was in the first place of the teacher of Ustad Asif Chishti, in Aga Khan Eirat and Ustad Faraidin Miyazadeh, in the Institute of Kabul. During my musical career, I had the pleasure of working and studying with Ustad uh, Asif Chishti in Iraq and also uh, Fraydun Miyazada at the Afghan National Institute of Music in Kabul, Afghanistan. و فعلاً هم شاگرد و افتخار شاگردی در نز استاد سالار نادر را دارم که یکی از شاگردهای ارشد استاد زاکی رسین می باشد. Now I have the pleasure of working and taking lessons with Ustad uh, Salar Nader, which I believe many of uh, our friends would know him in the U.S. Wonderful! What um, what an amazing journey! I um, appreciate that you have had so many different teachers. Um, and actually, I'm curious, maybe we can talk a little bit more about your family, if that's okay with you. Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm curious, so you mentioned that your brother was a singer. Um, were any other members of your family musicians, um, including, um, you know, your parents? I'm also wondering if your any female members of your family were involved in the arts as well. Me shema goftein ke baz az azay khanawade shema dastrasi ba onar daran musiqi daran az brother ton yad kardin. Me khayen ke bafaman chitor dar bari padar madar shema ay ona ham musiqi kar mekan va khususan dar bari azay khanawade ton ke khanama hasan ona ham musiqi kar mekan ya tana aqayan. پدرم که بود خودش هم خطاط بود هم نقاش بود هم استاد مکتب بود و هم موسیقی کار میکرد باز برادرم که به موسیقی رو به شکل کلاسیک کار میکنه اما دروف یک برادرم است و یک خواهرم خواهر کلانم نقاش هستند اونا که به پوانتون کلان ایراد استاد بودند قبل از رژیم طالبان و و متاسف و دیگه کسی از فامیلی ما در موسیقی نیست فقط مردا هستند و زنا در در بخش خطاطی و رسامی اینا فعالیت دارن خواهر my father was a teacher and he also uh, was a person who was interested in drawing my older my older brother was a musician and uh, my sister, my older sister, who studied uh, and then uh, later taught at the uh, University of Eirat, uh, she was drawing. But uh, majority of members of my family that they are uh, practicing music, they are male and not female. But all, although some members of my family that they are female, they do practice different uh, forms of art. 
Thank you for sharing. Um, I think that leads me into my next question um, because I do know that at this moment, um, there are a lot of challenges for musicians to be able to play music in Afghanistan. I think even before there was there were some challenges for people to study and perform openly. Um, so I would like to ask you, Hamid, like have you um, have you faced any challenges when studying music? That I want to say, because of the shared feeling, because why the music I call me, because I was born in Amazon. مقابل مشکلات هستن قسمه که می فابیم اما پیش ازی که ای گروه طالبا هم به افغانستان بین مشکلات بود افغانا نمی تونستن بسیار بازوتی موسیقی خود تمرین کنن می خواهیم بفهمم که شما چطور قدم قدمت مشکلات مقابل شدین در طول می وقتی که در افغانستان موسیقی تمرین می کردین متاسفانه ای گپ هم ما و هم شما می فهمیم که شرایط فراگیری و نواختن موسیقی در افغانستان بسیار مشکل و دشوار است و قبل همچنین قبل از رژیم طالبان این کار بود و بله البته که ما هم چون در افغانستان زندگی کردم و اونجا یاد گرفتم تبله را با مشکلات زیاد روبرو شدم حتی بعضی جا از سرک تیر می شدم مرا می گفتن اون او کافر که تبله کار می کرد Yeah, since I also practiced music in Afghanistan and lived there, I also faced challenges like other musicians in Afghanistan. For example, when uh, walking down the road, uh, people would tell uh, that he look he's an infidel because he practiced music. program mm-hmm. music Afghanistan به جای از این که تشویق شوم و انگیزه بگیرم بیشتر مایوس می شدم و ناوید می شدم می گفتم چرا من این تبله را انتخاب کردم yeah when i sometimes uh, attended to some performances or festivals um, often the public did not support and but discouraged me and uh, so i sometimes thought why did i even choose to practice tabla because no one is really encouraging but discouraging me at all the time و اما برادرم که او خودش استاد ما بود او بسیار مرا تشویق میکرد و همیشه نمیگذاشت که از موسیقی دور شوم و همیشه پشتیبان ما او بود but my brother who, who uh, was my first teacher he always encouraged me and he did not let me to uh, to give up music but encouraged me to continue practicing and performing yeah, so. I'm sorry to hear that you had to deal with that. Um, that's very difficult. And one of the things that we've talked about with other performers in the series is, you know, there's social challenges, of course, and there's individual people who motivate us. Um, and is there like, you know, can we find the point at which the individual motivation can overcome the social challenges? Yeah, I want to say that in the world we have to do a lot of problems, but we don't have to do a lot of problems, but we don't have to do a lot of problems, but we don't have to do a lot of problems. I want to ask you, Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, 
این بسیار مشکل است که آدم ادامه بده در ای تو یک آلت و نظر به ای که من مثلا پانزده سال شانزده سال میشه که من تبله را شروع کردم نظر به او که من اینقدر تمرین کردم آل او قدر توانایی ندارم که یعنی او قدر سعی نتوانستم که تمرین کنم ریاضت کنم چون انگیزی او نبوده و آل هم من اسم میکنم که من کمبودی ها را دارم نظر به ای که من اجده سال تمرین میکنم It is challenging. Uh, I have uh, practiced uh, and played the tabla for more than 16 years, but I still sometimes do think because of the society, because of uh, what happened in Afghanistan during uh, the last 40 years of war, that I personally believe that there are things that I was not able to learn, that I wish I had the opportunity to learn. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, I think this, I'm asking also because um, I know uh, Hamid and I have had conversations about this. I know um, I've talked to uh, Negin, Hamid's wife, about this as well. Uh, she's also a fantastic musician. Um, but because I, I ask because I noticed that there aren't a lot of Afghan female tabla players, um, can you... Talk a little bit about um, any groups that are unable to perform or learn tabla, for example, women, um, or are there any other groups that are excluded from being able to practice and learn even more and maybe have even more challenges um, to learn music? خواستن پرسان کنن که در افغانستان گروه هایی هستن که نمیتونن تبله بنوازن و یا همین فرهنگ فرهنگش نبوده که بنوازن مثل خانوما که ما شما میفهمیم در افغانستان معمول نبود که خانوما تبله بنوازن خواستن پرسان کنن تنها به خانوما بسیار چالش هست که تبله را بیاموزن بنوازن و یا گروه های دیگه جامعه هم چنان هستم که از ازمی فضیلت مستفید نمیشه <تصفيق> قبل از رژیم طالبان ای گپ بسیار بود حتی مردم از طرف فامیل خود اجازه نداشتند که حتی موسیقی گوش کنند چی جای چی که برسه که ای را تمرین کنند یا یاد بگیرند و برای خانم هم غیر ممکن بود که یک خانم در افغانستان یا در ایراد خصوصا تبله کار کنه و او بره در بین جامعه اجرا کنه بیفور دی طالبان رژیم ایون ایت واز چالنجینگ فور اندیویژوالز تو پرکتیس میوزیک بیکاز یوزولی دیر فامیلیز دید نات انکوریشن تو پرسیو دیس کریر اند آلسو فور وومن این ایراد It was a challenge, and a lot of uh, women were not allowed to practice uh, this particular uh, drums uh, in a lot. I had a friend who was a professional and they had a lot of friends who had a lot of friends who had a lot of اما اونا فقط به خانه خود تمرین میکردن و به خود میخواندن اصلا اجازه نداشتن از طرف پدر اجازه نداشتن که از خانه به جای دیگه موسیقی کنن غیر از خانه I had professional friends who were singers uh, I have friends that they are professional singers but they were not allowed to um, sing outside their home so they would sing uh, inside uh, but not um, in public or uh, other settings به خاطر که والدینشان اجازه نمیتن برش And again, because the parents did not allow them. Thank you for explaining that. I know it's, it's, it's strange because it's difficult for all musicians, but definitely for others, you know, even to begin learning is such a big challenge. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for covering that. Um, I also just, um, I guess, quickly just want to mention, you You mentioned talking about in Hirat specifically, there were these kinds of challenges for female musicians. Um, do you think that, you know, in different parts of the country, there are different challenges to different people um, or different, um, 
rather than saying different challenges, maybe I can say this this way, in different parts of Afghanistan, do different ethnic groups have different connections to music or different relationships with playing music and musicians? شما یادآوری کردیم که در ایران به خانم ها بسیار دشوار بودن که رشته موسیقی را پیش ببرد آیا همین مشکل در جامعه افغانی در هر جامعه است یا در تنها در, در شهر ایران همین مشکل بود مقصد شنزی است که به دور مثال در کابل در مزار آیا مردم باز منیمی مشکلات داشتن و یا فرق میکرد ولایت به ولایت هر ولایت شرایط خاص خود خاص شرایط خود خاص خود داشت مثلا در کابل که بود باز کمگواری بیشتر آزادی بود مردم هم بیشتر حق داشتن که موسیقیات بگیرن و زنا هم تعداد زیادشان آلار و شو آلات موسیقی را یاد میگرفتن در مکتب موسیقی افغانستان In every region, every province, people had their own circumstances. Uh, although in Iraq, um, the opportunity for musicians, both men and women, was more limited. Uh, but for example, in Kabul, um, more people were trying to pursue music. Boys were allowed to study music, and there were, of course, uh, ladies. as well that they start um, singing and also learning instrumental music. For example, uh, the Afghanistan National Institute of Music, they were uh, about 50-50, 50% boys and uh, 50% women. So in every in different provinces, people had different challenges, uh, challenges and different circumstances. Well, uh, با خاطر یه گفتم مخصوصا ایراد که ایراد بیشتر جامعهش تعصبی است و به نمیخوان که اولادایشان اجازه بدن که موسیقی کار کنن I mentioned about the ایراد uh, that we were not allowed to practice music uh, it was because we had a very conservative society that the families did not like their children to practice music. Oh, thank you for sharing. Um, I'm very happy that you were, you had a supportive family that uh, helped you perform, that you had great supporters who encouraged you. Um, I'm already getting texts from people asking, when is he going to play? Um, so uh, we are all very excited to, um, that you are joining us today, Hamid John, and that you are able to share your talent with us. Thank you very much, Mr. Shema Khat Fahmida. 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 تشکر میکنم تشکر از شما که این فرصت برای ما دادن و باعث افتخار ماست. Uh, he thanks uh, those people that uh, that are interested in him and his performance and he's very happy to be here and spend time with uh, with the audience and us as well. Of course, thank you for sharing your story. Um, with that, I will let's get this PowerPoint back up quickly. And I think maybe we'll just go over a few basic points for people who are not familiar. We now have the story of the musician that we will be learning from today. Um, but I just wanted to share a few points very quickly about Afghan music for those of you who might not be familiar with it. Um, but when I say the music of Afghanistan in this slide, um, that's kind of a misnomer because there are so many different types of music um, as we were just discussing with all of the different regions in question. Um, there's extremely diverse cultures and extremely diverse musical traditions um, between uh, classical pop and traditional genres. I can say that there are influences both from within Afghanistan and internationally. And perhaps Hamid John, can you, um, I feel like I've missed 
quite a few of the styles of music in this description. Um, can you maybe share with us a few of the styles of music that are played commonly in Afghanistan today? Uh, I mean, John, Baza's a style of music that I want to say, but I want to say it's a very good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Music in Afghanistan is a very different way to do it. It's a very different way to do it. It's a classic way to do it. It's a very different way to do it. As you mentioned, music is very diverse in Afghanistan. Uh, it starts from very simple charbaiti and uh, also um, classical um, Indian um, music. Music is a very different time in the world of the Mafila, music in Mali and folklore in Afghanistan. The music that's most common is uh, classical and, and, of course, popular music. Uh, uh, well... موسیقی فولکلوریک فولکلوریک افغانستان عبارتند از سبکای the tradition of Afghan music genres are سبکای بدخشی خرابوتی لوگری قطقانی ازارگی سمت مشرقی کلیوالی ملیات پشتون ترکمنی ایراتی قرسک پنجر Wanuristani. Those genres are Badakhshi, Kharabati, Logari, Katagani, Azaragi, Pashtun, Kaliwali, Turkman, Irati, Kharsak, Panchidi, Nuristani, and of course more. Wow. Hey, Lady Yada. There is a lot. In case anyone was wondering how bad my Farsi is, that's the extent I can say. It's a lot of different traditions. Um, thank you for, for letting us know all of those traditions, um, Hamid John. Um, you mentioned Harobati, and I think this is a good opportunity for us to quickly summarize. Last week, um, our last event was actually a lecture by um, Dr. Wahidullah Sahar. Um, a former head of the musical faculty at Kabul University, um, who received his PhD in, um, from Indira Kala University in New Delhi, um, and is uh, an expert in Hindustani music, but also um, performing Afghan classiki. Um, and he gave a wonderful lecture on some of the, um, on some of the histories of Afghan music, specifically um, the different influences that um, make it what it is today. Um, so just in short, um, just to very quickly summarize, um, he talked a little bit about Afghan music being a combination of influences from Khorasan, um, Khorasan being a region that spans um, part of what is now modern day Afghanistan, as well as Iran, Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan. Um, if any of you are familiar with the musical practices of those regions, they tend to be um, either described under the umbrella of Maqam, Shash Maqam in Central Asia or Daska in Iran. So still a modal framework, um, but very different um, sort of theoretical approaches from Hindustani or um, South Asian uh, classical music in India and Pakistan. Um, which brings us to our second set of influences from Hindustani music as we will explore and as the first video in this um, event showed off a little bit. Um, and finally, as Hamid John sort of spoke about these local and folk traditions of which there are many. Um, Hamid also spoke about uh, Harabati music and um, Dr. Sahar talked about the role of Harabat musicians Harabat was actually a street in Kabul where all the musicians who were brought from India um, in the late 1800s settled um, and basically began um, influencing the musical culture of Kabul and through centralized musical education in, in Kabul, kind of out towards the rest of Afghanistan. Um, we talked a little bit about um, Composers like uh, Ustad Qasim Afan, um, Ustad Qasim Afan, and Ustad Sarahan, 
in bringing classical um, or bringing a classicalized feel to Afghan music. Um, Ustad Qasim Afghan brought um, what we would now call as being a Drupad style of Hindustani music, really blending that with a lot of local folk traditions. Um, Ustad Sarahang, um, whose book, The Law of Music, inspired this event title um, or the title of the series, um, brought a, a little bit more of influences from Khyal as well. So um, it's a great presentation. Um, if any of you want to see it, uh, we do have a YouTube video of it up on our channel. So please go check it out. I thought this would be an, an important summary because um, for those of us exploring rhythm in Afghanistan, um, we have um, we have a lot of similar words between Hindustani music and also Afghan um, uh, rhythmic practices. Um, so I guess the first one is uh, thal. Um, I have a difficult time defining thal. Um, Hamid, can you define thal in, in Dari? Hamid, can you define thal in Dari? Tal رفتار یک ریتم میگویند که امو چند مطره داره و هر تال مت و هر تال نام داره و ما تالا رو به نامش میشناسیم و تال خودش رفتارای تبله است Tal is a rhythmic cycle uh, we have different tals each has a specific name uh, but basically uh, it is a rhythmic uh, cycle um, that you go through and then of course you have a specific ones that uh, you uh, get to learn uh, as a student. Thank you. I glad I got it partially correct. Um, um, so that's Thal. Um, we also have, oh, by the way, most of these words are also in Hindustani as well. So Thal is definitely shared. Um, what another word that is shared is bol, literally meaning to speak. Um, in Hindi, um, which is um, sort of a spoken syllabic interpretation of the dal. Um, so Hamid John, would you be able to give us an example of a bowl? Maybe a bowl in uh, Mughali, for example? Yeah, uh, bowl in Mughali, but I to be in the Masalan da titi, da da titi, ta titi, da da titi, da e yak bolas for the da. Yeah, so he also repeat the same thing. Uh, he gave the example uh, that is the spoken, um, uh, the spoken words of the talk because basically what you play on tabla is what you sing or is, is speak. Uh, so if you would play. If you would play that on tabla, it will sound like this. Mesha in a mirror and all the tabla pronouncing. So as you see, he is uh, playing what he is uh, saying or singing. So basically, it is the alphabet of ta tabla. Thank you. Um, and yeah, uh, just a couple more phrases so that we can um, really just get this lesson um, together. Um, so the first, uh, these are two words that go together, which is um, kur um or uh which we call some in uh hindustani music and uh khali um pur meaning full and khali meaning empty um and those correspond really roughly to being like the on beat or the down beat of the cycle um that begins the dal and the khali being the off beat um and actually, interestingly, there are hand motions that correspond to Hali. So when you count, um, you are able to indicate this to people that are watching. So um, Hamid John, would you be able to show us, you know, uh, with your hands, how you would do Pur and Hali? 
میشه که امروی دستایتو نشان بتین پول خالی را چرا فهم با که بیننده ها هم بیبینه فرق پول خالی را پول خالی در اساس موسیقی افغانی و ایندی است وجود داره و اکثرا در نیم نوت نیم اولش پر می باشه و نیم دومش خالی Yeah, so Puran Khali is the basic of Indian and Afghan, uh, basic of Afghan and Indian music. And as you mentioned, uh, Pur is on beat and Khali is off beat. Well, Pur is a little bit of a little bit of a And uh, usually half, half of the Uh, the uh, uh, half of tall is uh, poor uh, and the other half is fall and uh, I'm uh, showing you dadra tall and I will show you uh, how it looks the, the, uh, the poor and holly or off, on beat or off beat بنا این قسم که میکنم پور است این قسم خالی است و این قسم بیت آی ساده when i clap my hands as on beat or pour when i do this is holy and then when i'm uh, counting like this is just rhythms of those majors like da tin tin ta din din da tin tin ta din din One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Was uh, Zarbi Bayakas were Holish the tree. The own beat for this thought, uh, tall is on one, and the off beat or Holly is on the three. Thank you for. for um... oh, going through that yeah this is going to be useful um going on as beats become faster and faster um knowing what the pur and knowing what the khali is is going to be uh really important for knowing when the beat returns back to the initial cycle that you know as per the tal so that's why we're going through this now um and the final uh key words um are Actually, they're pretty self-evident, um, but you know we included them here for a quick language lesson. Um, some of you might be familiar with the concepts of uh, vilambit and drut um, in Hindustani music to indicate tempo, um, vilambit being slow, drut being fast. Um, and in Dari, um, the terms are literally just slow and fast. So um, ahista for slow, te is for fast, Maybe some Hindi speakers are noticing some linguistic connections. Um, but uh, yeah, we thought that these are some important words to cover. Um, and with that, um, I know a lot of people have been asking me uh, already. I've gotten like a couple texts. When are we going to start the music lesson? And here it is. So I think the very first thing to go over is, um, yeah, as Dr. Sahar talked about last week and as uh, we saw in the video before, um, Afghan music actually uses some of the same dals as Hindustani music, um, particularly in classic E, but also in pop and folk music as well. Um, an example that um, Hamid pointed out to me today is um, Topia, which is a beat that is somewhat unique to Afghanistan is what he considers to be a variant of Keherwa, which people know in Hindustani music. Um, so Hamidjan, would you be able to play for us uh, Tapia and mm. Keherwa, just so we know what they sound like differently? Yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah. میشه که فرق هر دویشه بنوازیم که بیننده ها فرق تاپیه و کروه را ببینن تاپیه فرست
added a little fanciness at the end. Um, but um, as you can see, they're both pretty similar. Um, they both have some, uh, you know, the cycle basically ends in the same way and they're both metered um, as eight count rhythms. Um, just as a small example, I would also like to thank Dr. Sahar for pointing this out to us last week. Um, but uh, here's an example of Tapiatal as played by uh, Ustad Amir Muhammad, um, just so we have a feel for what that sounds like and a little bit more beautiful music. tried to end on the Tihai. Um, but as you might have been able to tell, for those who are familiar with Hindustani music, you have that really typical Keharwa lilt, um, just a lot of very similar feelings <laughs> to Keharwa. Um, and actually, when I was discussing the Thals that we would cover in this workshop, I did ask uh, Hamid, I was like, do you want to cover Topia? And he was like, it's basically Keharwa. Um, so we decided to focus on two really wonderful, unique Afghan rhythms um, instead. Um, the first one, and this is where if anyone wants to pull out their drum of choice, be it tabla, um, be it daf, or if you have a tombak, dumbak, sabahali, we can work around it and maybe you can just um, explore with uh, the rhythms, how you're feeling. Um, and if you just want to clap and count along, that is also very useful. Um, I also would like to remind people at this stage and also throughout the presentation, please feel free to drop any questions in the comments. We are always happy to um, answer them for you and um, we will get to those at the end, but please feel free at any point to let us know if you have any questions. Um, so with that, the very first thal that we will be exploring, um, as actually one of the commenters pointed out to us um, or asked us for, is a uh, Mughali thal, um, which is a 7-4 rhythm. Those who are familiar, that does make it an odd time signature, but, um, but we love it nonetheless. Um, so a little bit about uh, Mughali thal. Um, it's uh, extremely versatile. Um, Maybe uh, uh, Hamid can tell us a little bit about Mughali Tal. Mughali is a traditional Tal of Khanias. I don't know if I can tell you that the first time I was born, I was born in Mughali. Mughli is a very traditional Afghan talk. I'm exactly not sure where it comes from, but he believes it, it, it could be from, from Mughalistan. And Af Matra aske monande tole rupa ke indi me bache ke am vilambit kar me sha am durut. Na. Now he is throwing some terms there, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but he, he was saying that uh, Mr. Mr. Tolle, uh, Chief of Team Tolle, he, yeah, so he was, he just said that Mughali is also seven um, matra or, or uh, beats, like 
Rupa, Tal, and Andy. Yes. و این میتونه که با موافل خوشی با رقص و پایکوبی هم استفاده شه و میتونه که با موافل آرام و قزل و صوفی اینا هم استفاده شه It is usual that uh, Mughali is played in weddings, um, for dances, for uh, a little bit up-tempo uh, music, but also for uh, much slower music like Ghazal as well. Wonderful. Yes. Just as, as we pointed out, it's extremely versatile um, and, you know, is good slow or fast. Um, and toward the end of Uh, it being very similar to Rupaktal, um, I think uh, when Hamid and I were working through what parts of the rhythm to share, he actually shared a dhun from Rupaktal <laughs> that uh, <laughs> he had to stop himself. He was like, oh, sorry, this is Muhali, but you could put it in Muhali if you wanted to. So again, speaking to our shared connections. Um, and this is the example that uh, Hamid pulled for us, which is actually by a famous Afghan pop artist um, uh, Ahmad Wali, um, his song uh, Gulese, which if I translated it correctly means apple flower, flower of the apple, but I, I'm very straightforward. I just said apple flower um, it's from the 70s. So um, just enjoy a little clip and maybe get a feel for what that 7-4 rhythm sounds like. Sunny dog. I cannot tell what it is. Uh, if Neil is able to unmute, maybe he would let us know. But if he cannot, that is also okay. Um, but um, anyways, just a little taste of that. And um, now we'll actually get to the workshoppy part of it. Um, so uh, Hamid John, would you be able to walk us through the bowl for Muholi? This is the most basic um, the most basic pattern. So would you be able to share that with us? I mean, John Paul, I mean, Tala, you know, Tala Mughali, that's like a way. Mughali af matra dare ke matra awalish wa doomish yak joy karmish. Yani yak tin matra doomish yani bisa dos. Misle du zarbi ke yage da musiqi sharqi qarbi di form mishnasin. Mughali is seven uh, beats. Uh, the first two is played like a half note. So uh, when you clap on the first one, you do not on the second one because it's, it's two beat disconnected, if I may say that way, uh, for those who do not know music. Uh, well, ten 
なーでんでんだーだーてんたーでんでんだーだ This is the ball and I am showing the、um, beat So てんなーでんでんだーだーてんなーでんでんだーだ This is the、uh, Wolf tal and、uh, it has poor and khali. Poor is on beat one, and khali is on beat four. And counting is like this one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. And one again, bull. てんなでんでんだだてんなでんでんだだてんなでんでんだだえてんえずとびつてんなてんなでんでんだだてんなでんでんだだてんなでんでんだだ。And I'm going to show on t a b l a For see me again, Balan Pat. And, and what was. So much.、Um, I like seeing Bossa John smiling throughout this. It feels it's nice to see you play, Hamid John.、Um, I think before we have you demonstrate、uh, Muholi in full,、um, we do have one variation,、um, I believe. So actually,、um, this is common also in Hindustani music, wherein、um, the basic Structure of a thal will often come with commonly accepted variations.、Um, sometimes those are filler notes, sometimes those are accent notes.、Um, but here we will, we have included a few variations、um, of Muholi as well as the next rhythm we'll be teaching.、Um, so, Hamid John, would you be able to play this variation as well for us? Of course. <clears throat> this is, this is. The Raftor Yakimi Bosha Farat not a l w a s far m e k o n e As she said, it's still the same、uh, tall, but uh, uh, just the notes are different. As, as you see,、uh, the second beat,、uh, on the first one, there was nothing on the second beat, but right now there is another 10 also in the second beat, but it's still the same part,、uh, tall as she mentioned. It's like this. 
テンテンタデンデンダーダダテンテンタデンデンダーダダテンテンタデンデンダーダダテンテンタデンデンダーダダテンテンタデンデンダーダダテンテンタデンデンダーダダ And on t a b l e t s like this Also, you can play it fast and slow. بستگی سرعتش بستگی به طرز آهنگ داره. The tempo depends on the structure of the song uh, to play fast or slow. Mm. Of course. Um, I think、um, now is the moment everyone's been waiting for. Also, is、uh, to see how many John play just like. Go for it. I know he was showing off a little bit before, but now is his moment to show off as much as he wants.、Mm-hmm. Um, Hamid John, would you be able to、um, play for us? But can you also show us the difference between the first bowl and the variation when you play? Okay. Okay. My Katesh metronome, I'm sure I'm going to tune the variation of the door was a voice. I will also turn on my、uh, metronome so the audience will、uh, understand.、Oh. It's on you said the beast tempo. It's on a 120 beat,、uh, 120 beats per minute.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. First variation. John, that was amazing.、Um, thank you for walking us through、uh, both of the ways that that, that Muholi can be expressed.、Um, 
And for those of you who once again are coming to uh, Tabla playing for maybe the first time or are witnessing um, Tal for the first time, um, one of the, the beauties of having a cyclical rhythmic pattern is all of these improvisations that you can place over um, the beat uh, so that sometimes you might go off the beat for a minute, but return to it and, you know, just catching the the poor um, or that first on beat uh, is going to be really critical. So um, obviously Hamid John did that really well. And um, this Thank is hopefully you. a great intro for that. That brings us to our uh, second uh, rhythm that we wanted to cover today, which is um, a really, really popular one. If you have heard any Afghan pop dance music, there's a really good chance you've heard this. Um, and it's called uh, Katahani. Um, maybe uh, Hamid John can share with us um, some of his uh, some of his information about uh, Katahani. Katahani is a tall tradition and tall Afghanias ke samte samtay Katakan. Da unje ziyad na vakta mesha was az unje rosh karda va felan. بسیار مشهور است بین افغان ها و در هر جای در میمانی و عروسی نواخته میشه قدرانی is a very traditional Afghan uh, rhythm um, the, the, the region uh, is Qataran uh, but uh, for sure right now uh, you can hear this uh, rhythm all across Afghanistan and usually Qatarani uh, is played in weddings and uh, parties Wonderful. Um, and actually, this is a selfish question I have because I'm interested in knowing this. Um, when did, because um, for those of you who um, may not know the geography of Afghanistan, Badakhshan is um, in the northeast part of Afghanistan. Katakhan used to be part of or near Badakhshan, as I understand. That's toward what we now know to be um, parts of Tajikistan. Um, so, uh, Hamidjan, do you happen to know when Katahani became really popular? Um, was it because of pop music? Was it always sort of, was it prior to pop music that it became very, um, well accepted through Afghanistan? Uh, that Bahotere Musiki popular, uh, but for Siolam of because Katarani is a very simple but very uh, rhythmic uh, rhythm. Uh, whenever people listen to this, uh, they like it, they enjoy it, and that's why uh, it, is, it is very popular um, across Afghanistan. And of course, <laughs> let, let me also make this note, people in Afghanistan like a little bit rhythmic music. Uh, so, so this is great for all Afghan people to you know, just enjoy a little bit. <laughs> و درباره تاریخش نمیفهم دقیق معلومات ندارم بسیار کلمه دای چیزا کار نمیده ایش I exactly do not know about the history uh, when it became popular uh, but that was what I knew I shared uh, shared with you and also I wanted to know uh, because uh, before I think the comment was made that Badakhshan is part of Tajikistan, but, uh, but I would just make it clear that Badakhshan is just a province it's still in Afghanistan. Right. Sorry, I, I, I should have clarified. It is near Tajikistan, correct? That's correct. Yes. Um, of course. So, yes, yeah, sometimes we have this situation where I, I want to know. I'm like, where did the history come from? And Truth be told, the history is sometimes just everyone liked it, so we all started doing it. Um, right. But um, it's it's obviously really catchy, as you'll see in our example, and also when uh, Hamid John walks us through it. Um, 
but uh, this rhythm is also, it can be um, performed on tabla, obviously, but um, because it is a party, sort of a really like up-tempo, fun beat, um, it's uh, also kept on dhol, which is, for those of you who know Punjabi music and North Indian music is a folk instrument, a two-headed drum, um, which they also have in Afghanistan. Um, and it's also kept on Zadba um, which is the Afghan goblet drum, similar to a dumbek or that bukar tombak. And um, Hamid also pointed out to me that people will often perform it on a dambura, which is um, a two-stringed lute um, that is, uh, it's, it's kind of just for strumming. So it uh, sort of enables people to be able to strum very quickly on it. Um, much faster than you would say be able to strum on a guitar um, or a sitar, for example. So it's um, really like rhythmic and percussive when you play it. Um, I have one, but at the risk of pulling it out and not being able to perform on it, I will not do that. Um, but um, I think this is a good chance to show us um, the example, a super popular song from recent Afghan pop music culture. Um, it is a song that came out, I think like 10 years ago um, by Jawed Sharif, um, an Afghan pop star. Um, and it's called Yakadam Fesh, which means one foot in front. Um, and yeah, um, most everyone's heard this song, but in case you didn't know what beat it was, here it is, it's Katakhani. So please enjoy. Keep going. I do love that song. It's my uh, my workout song when I want to stay in stay on the beat. Um, but um, that's Yakadam Fish, and that's a little bit of Katahani. If you felt yourself dancing, I think you were doing you were doing the right thing. Um, so yeah, yeah. Let's um, oh, let's begin um, our little lesson on Katahani. Um, Hamid John, would you would you be able to talk us through the bowl and playing this uh, this style as well? Katakani چهار ماتر می باشه که بولش عبارت از کتنا کتنا دننا کتنا کتنا دننا کتنا با ماتری اول و دومش دو ضربی کار میشه یعنی یعنی دو تا نوت در قالب یک ماتر جا میکنیم کتنا کتنا دننا کتنا کتنا دننا Kadavani has four uh, beats, as he said, the balls is katna, katna, then nang. And also he explained the first two beats, um, those, those katna, katna is, uh, I forgot, you know, I'm... I'm katna is um, come in, in one beat. One beat, right. Yeah. And, and so those are like uh, eight notes in Western music. Right. Um, and actually, this is um, a good example of uh, like a really iconically syncopated beat. Um, so, you know, even within the bowl, you know, the kat na kat na din na, like there's still like the emphasis on what you might call like the the and if you're counting in a Western framework. So the counting pattern, while it is a straight 4-4 four, four rhythm, and you could count one, two, three, four. 
Um, for those of us who may be familiar with Western percussive counting, one and two and three, four, mm. one and two and three, four. So you get that mm. yeah. that downbeat also. Um, uh, and he's going to uh, play how uh, it would sound like and, and also the ball. Katna katna din na, katna katna din na, katna katna din na. It's too simple. Katna kat katna katna din na, katna katna din na, katna katna din like this. Katna 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 kat katna katna din na, katna katna din na, katna katna din na, katna. Katna, katna, din na. Katna, katna, din na. Slower. Katna, katna, din na. Katna, katna, din na. And the uh, counting pattern is as Amitureke uh, Amita Jangov. One and two and three four. 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 And I'm going to show on tabla. Um, in the first two beat, when he plays a cat, uh, uh, now is also played um, as uh, eight notes. Mm -hmm. Like like this. This is no and this is cat. In first beat, we play. Also, I think that those who are doing a lot of work in the past, I can also show to those that they play a lot of work in the past, or a uh, how it should sound on those instruments as well. Like this. we have quite a few variations on this so just wanting to be aware of time um let's walk through those a little bit quickly um so we have a uh, variation number one on katarani um hamijan would you be able to play this for us please it's a little different uh the, the only difference, as you can also see on the screen, the, the first beat is uh, just the, the different and it's, uh, it's played thin. 
Then I got nothing now. Mm -hmm. Counting pattern is also same, and I can do and we can do in it by fast and slow. Actually, have one more variation on Katarhani. Um, wait, do we have two, three? Well, we have two more. Maybe um, Hamid John, just because uh, we're running a little bit um, late, um, maybe can we just um, can you just play the variations quickly? Um, play this one quickly, and then we'll play the next one quickly, and then we'll let you demonstrate. Um, however you would like to at the end. Mm -hmm. For me, then, because the work means that my variation is been a was in tenor, was education been a was in was program of a page me when the hotel work. A mushkilness. Here is some core mesh. Titty cut a titty cut a titty cut a din da. 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 یا کم مشکل است برای کسایی که نویاد میگیرن کم مشکل است. This variation could be more challenging to those that they are going to learn this as as beginners. It's like this. really funny to slow down and this amazing um for those who um once again might be new to the world of tabla playing uh Titikata or Tirikita um, is basically a, a very, it's like a rapid succession of four, um, four sort of strokes on the tabla um, that it's very common in Hindustani music as well. Um, so they're, they generally are like one beat. Uh, it's not like this is unique to Katahani, the Tirikita or Titikata, but um, here it's used uh, as sort of a main as a main placeholder for beats one and two. So um, just for those of you who are new to this, please always feel free to return to this as a resource. And um, if you want, uh, Hamid John could also just like teach you how to play it more. Um, so always room to grow in tabla. And finally, the final variation we have is um, this one that you, uh, I actually didn't get a chance to see Hamid John play it when we were discussing this. So um, would love to hear it now. It's another variation. It's like this tatun katun den tun tatun katun den tun tatun katun den tun. Ma to alfaza ba mu shakli afghanish megam bakhshish ba shadi. The only difference here is the the syllabus on on. On those, but uh, the rhythms is still as you can see. We have uh, four beats, um, and then in the first, uh, the first beat and second beat is played eight notes. And again, in what we talk Western music, and so now he's going to show us again. 
タートゥンカットゥンデントゥンタートゥンカットゥンデントゥンタートゥンカットゥンデントゥン It's like this タートゥンカットゥンデン It's the whole the ball I'm doing Amazing.、Um, I think then this is the time when、um, actually we do have one question I would like to ask,、um, ask you, Hamid John, while、uh, we're on the subject.、Um, for variation two, the, is titikata different from tirikita when you say it in?、Uh, Because when Indian students learn, we normally learn Tirikita, but is that different from Tirikata? It's totally the same, but I, I, told, I told in Afghani language. <laughs> yeah. Just an、yeah. Afghan accent, let's say. Yeah, yeah.、Uh, so、it's just that difference, yeah. Yeah, so that's,、um, yeah, I think there were some differences、uh, in the way that you gave me the bowl. Uh, Hamid, that maybe they would be written differently in,、uh, you know, in Hindustani music. But、um, I think theoretically they're still the same.、Um, and maybe just to sort of end us on a happy note,、um, would you be able to play us a little bit of Katahani? Maybe if you feel comfortable, are you able to walk us through all of the variations while you play? Of course. Of course. Thank you so much.、Mm -hmm. Of course. First, I am playing fast now. One was very like there was a lot of bias, so you could really feel feel the beat. It was good.、Um, thank you so much, Hamid John. I feel like we 
we're just beginning to explore your talent a little bit in this space. Um, I do, um, once again, being mindful of time, um, this was the section that we allotted for audience Q&A. So if anyone has any questions that they would like to ask, please feel free to drop them now. We'll stay on just a few more minutes um, to field those. Um, the meanwhile, I have a selfish question. I have a lot of selfish questions. Um, in each of the variations for Katahani, are those regionally different or are they different according to one is maybe more classical, one is maybe more pop? Um, what is the difference? Mm -hmm. uh, یک شکل سادش ده وقتی که آواز خان میخوانه او کار میشه وقت یک شکل وریشن دو یا سهش ده وقت نغمه یا وقتی که آواز خان نمیخوانه Different variations are used uh, of course for composition sets but uh, for example the first variation is uh, played when the singer is singing so while you're playing with the singer you're playing that and when after he finishes part and you have the melody, the tabla player, he has the freedom to go and uh, play the second, second, third, second, third or fourth variations, just to make it a little bit more fancier. Of course. It's really, it's really lovely. And um, I think we don't have any questions in the chat, but um, my mom just texted me um, asking, Hamid, if um, you would like to play something for us, whatever you like. Um, Basachan, maybe you and I can uh, turn off our cameras and uh, Hamid, John, would you would you feel comfortable playing for us? Mm, just a little. <laughs> just a little. <laughs> Go crazy, show off. This is this is your your choice. So Tashakur, I let's enjoy. <laughs> I would like to play Tinta for one or two minutes.
Tashakur, Hamid John, that was beautiful. Of course, it's my pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I don't see any more questions um, from the audience, but I do want to let everyone know um, that even if you're based in Brooklyn, um, uh, you can always drive down a couple hours to visit uh, Hamid in DC, um, mm -hmm. where he's been living since August. Um, you can pick me up. I live in Baltimore and we can <laughs> drive together. Um, yes, and come please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, thank you, Hamid John. I would also like to extend a huge thanks to Basset for um, stepping in to translate. Um, I actually would like to take this moment to just say very quickly that we had reached out to, uh, we had planned on working with um, an amazing um, femme Afghan tabla player, Mariam Bahadari, who lives in New Jersey. Um, and actually, um, uh, has a very interesting story of how she uh, learned uh, Afghan tabla by herself, um, you know, largely because there are no avenues for women to learn tabla, but she she made it. She performs now um, around the community. Um, and she unfortunately wasn't able to join us today because she is translating for refugees. So um, we're all saving the world in our, our own way. And um, I just wanted to um, encourage you to check out her work. Um, I'm sure we will share it on BRN's uh, social media feeds. But once again, her name is Mariam Bahadori. Um, the last name is B-A-H-A-W-D-O-R-Y. Um, and you can find her on Instagram, um, as well as, like I said, traveling um, around America, sharing her talents. Um, and Bossette, uh, who joined us from Kansas um, is an amazing, I said, trumpet player, but also has big dreams of coming to DC as well. So it'll be a big old party in the DMV if you come and join us, everyone. So um, with that, um, please, uh, once again, um, we really want to say a huge thanks to Brooklyn Raga Massive for giving this platform to share Afghan music. Um, Next or this Friday, we have a screening of the documentary Rock Cobble, um, which is about uh, a, the first heavy metal band in Afghanistan, which is pretty dope. Um, and we'll also be having a Q&A with the director, Travis Beard, who runs Sound Central Festival, um, as well as um, Soleiman um, Omar, who was the um, one of the musicians in Afghanistan's uh, first heavy metal band, District Unknown. Um, so they'll be joining us for a Q&A. And then next Tuesday will be our final event, Fusions and Futurisms um, in Afghan Music, um, which will feature uh, an Afghan-American DJ, um, Nagin Balwak, uh, Hamid's uh, wife, and an amazing musician herself who's the first female conductor in Afghanistan, as well as hip hop artists who are currently based in Herat, which is where, uh, as we recall, Hamid John is also from. So it's gonna be a really rich and wonderful conversation, but um, thank you so much, Hamid, for being a part of this, for teaching us. Um, thank please, you. of course, um, we, um, let's talk more, would love to, uh, see where you go as a musician, and we would love to keep working with you as much as possible. And Basset John, please, as always, keep us posted as well. And um, thank you both so much. Tasha Kuriziod. And thanks, of course, to our audience. Please uh, stay tuned for more events, and we hope to see you soon. That, Khudafiz. Khudafiz. Okay. <laughs>